All right, so I've spoken to over 2,000 investors individually, and this question comes up a lot. Can I use my retirement funds to invest in real estate or syndication alternative asset deals? And the answer is yes. So a lot of people think, man, I just I don't have any cash to invest, but they don't realize they have all this cash, well, maybe in their company retirement account or just in a retirement account somewhere, that if you figure out how you can tap it, there's a way you can use that to be able to invest in commercial real estate, alternative assets such as businesses or car washes or ATM machines or things like this. So it's really important. Uh, but again, a lot of people think they need to take money out of their IRA or out of their retirement account and then go invest over in a deal. And I'd say, don't do that. Right? If you can, leave it in the retirement account and then it will allow you to invest using that retirement account and continue to have it grow on a tax deferred basis. So let's jump into that. I'm really excited to jump in this with you. All right, so welcome. My name is Bronson Hill. I'm the CEO of Bronson Equity. If we haven't met, uh, it's great to meet you. We do alternative assets such as ATM machines, car washes, oil and gas, multifamily. We've raised uh, over $40 million for different assets. I'm also the uh, author of this book behind me here, Fire Yourself, Replace Your Working Income with Passive Income in Three Years or Less. So let's talk about understanding self-directed IRAs, right? So there's a difference between uh, an IRA, which is an investment retirement account, uh, which is also sometimes called a 401k or 503b. There's different terms, that are kind of same type of plan. Use an employer-based plan that you work for at a job or an employer. They put money aside or you put money aside. And they match or not. And then there's something called a self-directed IRA or SD IRA, right? A self-directed investment retirement account. Um, and the difference really is that a lot of us, we don't realize that when we work at an employer or we work at a job, um, we can actually, we have access to that money. We just have to ask HR, can we roll over the funds to a self-directed account? Now, when you leave an employee, when you leave, leave a job as an employee, you can roll that over just by letting them, hey, I wanna roll it over this new thing. And you set up, you just, it's a very simple plan. They do it all the time, they roll it over. And then sometimes while you're still working, maybe you've worked in a place for five, 10, 15 years, there may be some options to roll that over as well. So a lot of people realize they can't do that. And I'm gonna give some recommendations at the end of this of just groups that I like to work with um, just so that you can understand, you know, these are these are potential people you can talk with on how to get that started. So um, again, there's there's two types really of self-directed IRAs. So I'm talking about self-directed, meaning just like it sounds, like I'm I'm directing where I want this to go. The most common type uh, is kind of really not self-directed. It's self-directed to the point where you only can invest in Wall Street assets. So only stocks or bonds or other sort of financial assets. So if you're with a big, you know, Morgan Stanley or Vanguard or some of these bigger groups, typically you can only do traditional uh, Wall Street type stuff. Um, the one that I really like is called checkbook control, uh, which really allows you to put money wherever you want it. You're the one who writes the check, sends the wire, you administrate it. And there's other ones that are self-directed that allow you to invest in real estate and other assets, but there's an approval process they go through. And those are okay. It just can take sometimes two, three weeks. So that's something to know that if you have uh, you know, self-directed IRA, it can take some time to be able to set that up. Um, so the main ones we talk about, we talk about a self-directed IRA that allows for alternative assets such as real estate or passive investments. Uh, checkbook control is preferred. There's a couple other things to note that when you invest using a self-directed IRA, if there's leverage used to buy a deal, meaning if I put 100K in and you know this deal is it's 20% down, 80% is leveraged to go buy an apartment similar to this one, right? So if that happens and the, 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 the project doubles in value in five years and we sell it, I've made 100K, 80% of that was, was gained using leverage. So of that $80,000 gain in my passive syndication, if it's in a regular retirement account, like a self-directed IRA, they can come and tax me at my normal income rates on whatever was used using debt. So on the 80,000, they could charge me 25, 30, up 40,000, depending on my tax rate, for using um, you know, that inside of an, a, a retirement account. So there's some ways to get around this. Um, the way there's, you know, and this is, it's a sneaky tax called unrelated business income tax, UBIT, U-B-I-T, unrelated business income tax. And, but there's some ways to get around it. One is using what's called a solo 401k. So a solo 401k, that's just if you have a business, if you have an entity or an LLC, you can qualify for that. If not, there's another one called a QRP, uh, which is a little more expensive, but again, it, it limits your exposure to this unrelated business income tax. So if you reach out to our team, we can help you to get in touch with uh, those guys to be able to work that out. Um, and then, so how do you actually set this up? So, okay, you know you wanna set it up, you wanna set up an IRA, you wanna set up something self-directed, um, you know, it, it just the biggest thing is it can take two, three weeks. It takes some time to get them set up. So the best time to invest 
is not when you have a deal. I mean, people, you can do it sometimes if there's time, there's space, whatever, but a lot of deals fill up quickly. A lot of our deals fill up pretty fast. Um, so sometimes it's not always available. Hey, I want to get in. It's like, well, it's going to take two, three weeks. We're not quite ready. You got to do that kind of ahead of time. So it's good to start before you have a deal present to be able to do that. And then the last thing I want to say about this is making your first investment. Um, you know, how do you do it? Again, I talked about the, the idea of checkbook controls. There's two types of self-directed IRAs. Uh, there's one that allows for investment in real estate, but a lot of times there's an approval process. So it's got to go from their internal office, from one desk to another desk. They've got to approve everything. They look at the deal. It takes a little more time. And when it's checkbook control, it means I'm the one that determines when that money's sent. I send the funds, whether through a check or a wire, and it can happen same day, right? So it's much, much easier to have checkbook control. I prefer it. If not the other one can't work. I just say it's much, much better. And then another thing to learn about, you can't do something called self-dealing with your retirement account. So if you're self-directing, you can't like buy a rental house and have your son live in, live in it, right? Or do something where you're doing a bunch of the work on the house yourself and you're flipping it or whatever. Like it doesn't really work for that, right? There's some exemptions there. So make sure you understand those rules of self-dealing. It really works much better for passive investing in syndications or other types of deals like that. So those are a few things I want to share. I want to share the three things that, um, you know, we just kind of we talked about, a few things we talked about, uh, understanding what a self-directed IRA is that you can invest in real estate with, why I love checkbook control. And then I'm going to share now my, my favorite groups with you that I like to work with. Um, so if you want to reach out to them, you can. So uh, one of them is UDirect. It's uh, the letter U and direct, just all together, UDirect IRA. That's with Karin Hall, a friend of mine. And uh, they have all the products there. Another one's called Rocket Dollar. They do similar stuff. And there's another one called QRP that I mentioned that um, they, for, you know, they have some unique stuff that helps particularly avoid from UBIT tax. And I have a, a, a QRP as well. Um, but I want to share this quote with you. Um, I think it's really valuable. It comes from the guy who wrote the Purple Book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it says, it says, it's not how much money you make, but how much money you keep and how hard it works for you and how many generations you keep it for. So this is about retirement. It's about legacy, right? I mean, do you want to pass on what you gain, what you grow to your heirs, which you can do. You can, you can actually pass on retirement accounts as well to your heirs uh, when you pass on, which is great. Um, I want to share this video with you too. This is with uh, Karen Hall. It talks about some of the new changes and secrets about uh, IRA investing. Some of the things that are out there. Check out that video there. And if you haven't joined our investment club, uh, you're missing out. I mean, we, we just have some awesome deals that you can't get anywhere else. And I'm super excited about it. So you can check that out. The link below, bronsonequity.com. Click the join button. We'll start a relationship with you. We'll get going. So I appreciate you taking the time to educate yourself. It truly inspires me. It's great to be able to share this with you. Love to hear any comments you have below. Please like and share this video. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.